Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing great. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. A wonderful start to their holiday season. Thanksgiving is now in our rear view window and now we are focused on the big man, right? Santa Claus, New Year's. And hopefully uh, everybody's having a fantastic year personally, uh, financially, and especially health-wise. Because again, at the end of the day, uh, without our health, you have nothing left to work on. As always, guys, we do truly appreciate uh, all your uh, support uh, of our channel, uh, especially, again, we're trying to give uh, as clear, unbiased point of view as possible without uh, the politics, without uh, the, the opinion. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, and if you are an old fart, right, watching this channel, uh, please click a like. It will definitely continue to help us out. So let's talk about the market, right? So this is basically a snapshot from uh, the week that was, right? Um, Monday started out, you had the Chinese protesters, uh, even in a communist country that, um, you know, their, their, their citizens are basically you know, underneath the thumb of the regime, right? Uh, they couldn't take it anymore. You know, they're, they're like, listen, I'm done. We're done with these uh, COVID restrictions. Listen, I don't care that you guys could come into my house, take me away, my family will never see me. I'm done, right? So the whole, it felt like the whole country started protesting. Uh, they hit the streets and this obviously held a, a pretty significant uh, ramifications for, well, the greatest uh, manufacturers of China, right? Which are the chip stock, with chip chip names, which are uh, the software names, anything, the computer names, anything that manufactures everything, which was the biggest exposure uh, or all to these stocks, uh, they started coming in, right? They started coming in and you're like, well, listen, you know, this CPI now is behind this. Um, you know, we just, you know, just can't get out of our own way again. Here we go again. Uh, that we're starting to go back in the middle of the range. And that, you know, that was kind of left a sour note uh, for a lot of tra traders because again if you guys remember we kept on hitting the bottom of the channel uh, after the CPI so it's one of those scenarios well how long can they keep uh, the dam from breaking you know they keep on testing the same level over and over again uh, three times in a row and by midweek you know Thursday continued a little bit of a sell-off kind of the trickle down from Monday session and by midweek Powell was uh, scheduled to talk now we, we've covered this in nausea uh, and I, and I think I mentioned in the last video, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for a long, long time. I don't remember, uh, especially in the last three, four years, how significant Fed has been every single day. It feels like every single day uh, they're either a Fed chairman, a Fed governor, um, you know, Fed pet. Somebody speaking constantly. It's constantly moving the markets. And there was no bigger movement of the markets than Wednesday. Um, I personally, going into that uh, Powell talk didn't think it was going to be such a tremendous event. I really didn't. I don't think a lot of people uh, did either because it was one of those things that, hey, you know what? It's midweek. Uh, we're going to talk about some things. We just had some Fed minutes a little while ago. What materialistically has changed? And nothing really has changed, but the market doesn't really need an excuse uh, to go batty, right? Like my mother-in-law. So midweek, he starts talking. He starts putting in some, you know, some little Powell notes. And the one thing he kept on kind of driving the point home is, you know, it's crazy as it sounds, but I think we're starting to get a handle of this inflation. So we started, he started hinting about a possible 50 basis point hike of the next one. And then we'll go, well, we'll see what happens after that. And the market really liked that news. And again, it doesn't really take a lot of market uh, intelligence or market rationality to kind of get the market going. And that's kind of what we say all the time. It's never going to make sense. The don't, especially for new traders. Don't think for a second that you're going to start your trading career or investment career or whatever you decide to do, and you're going to look at the market, it's going to make sense. It, it's never made sense in the last 24 years for me, so why should it start now? So the market overreacted just the way the market always does, and sometimes it overreacts bad and sometimes it overreacts good. We'll get to that in a second. But this time around, it did overreact positive. And you can see here, and we talked about it on Wednesday's video, um, the market went nuts. I mean, that's the best way of saying it. The market went nuts. The Qs basically took it down uh, a two-week channel in two hours, right? NASDAQ went up 
4.4% uh, in two in basically two hours. Just an absolute crazy move. Uh, the S&P on Powell's speech went up 3%. And we said to myself, wow, this is absolutely insane. Because not only did they put up this whole move, but you can see here, just this is a 60 minute view. It took down two weeks worth of ranges, literally in two hours. You can see it. it if you look at the top of the channel here, you can see, look where we are, right? We completely took down this whole channel here in two days. The next day, uh, we had an inside day, even though a lot of stocks kind of price improved on the previous day. And then it led up to and then it led up to Friday, right? And Friday was the jobs number. We knew, you know, going into Friday, we knew there was going to be, you know, a little bit of significance. Uh, we've seen a couple of strong job numbers uh, in the last couple of uh, data points. So it wasn't really a shock. Uh, that the numbers could be uh, could be stronger than anticipated. The only you know the only thing we can't prepare for is the reaction. And I say this every single day. You can try to uh, try to analyze the market on prior night's research. And that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to guess where the market's going to close at year end or you know week. We're just taking it day by day, trade by trade. And we we knew that the market was going to be a significant price reflection just because how important the data was. And they came out with the data. Of course, it was stronger uh, than normal. And next thing you know, in seconds, right? Just in seconds, just the way the PAL market exploded on the way up, right? And felt like in minutes, and obviously turned into a massive, massive push uh, in a, in a two-hour area. Well, we had the negative effect of what happens with data points uh, gets, uh, you know, gets released and the market reacts to them. And we came out with the jobs number. And next thing you know, we woke up and you're like, holy crap. So instantly, instantly, uh, the NASDAQ went down, uh, just you know, it felt like 200 handles instantly. The Qs were down seven points and you're like, here we go again. The difference was, and the difference is, it's not what the news is. It's not even how the initial reaction is is what happens next. And unlike last time that there was a strong jobs number and led to a decline for, you know, two, three weeks, this time was different, right? It's like I always, when I always go to a jet game, especially the previous years, I always go to it and I go, okay, today, today's different, right? Today's, we're gonna win, we never win. But this year's different and maybe today's different. And that's exactly what happened with the Bulls. Uh, the Bulls, you know, the Qs went down instantly seven points and instead of rolling over, right, because they could have easily rolled over. Keep this in mind. It was a 4.4% move in two hours, right? We went down very, very quickly, seven points on the Qs. But unlike the previous jobs numbers that came in strong, the Bulls made a stance. And that's the most important part. Remember, it's not the news. It's how the market reacts. And then slowly but surely, the Qs put in a low, a pre-market of 286. And slowly but surely started just grinding higher, grinding higher, grinding higher. And when you look at the end of the day, the Qs were only down a dollar. That's it. They were only down a dollar uh, for the day. They put in a green candle, which again, if you're brand new to uh, technical analysis, especially jan uh, candlesticks charts, when you have a big green filled candle, it means the close was a lot higher than the open. When you have a, a big red candle, that means the, the close was a lower than the open. So this is a very, very bullish sequence. You have three days in a row of uh, overreaction, which is a good thing, uh, to the upside, uh, followed by a res day or an inside day. Well, no, it technically it wasn't. It actually took out the previous day high. And yesterday, the bulls you know, took a couple of shots to the jaw, one to the kidney, got off the mat, kept fighting, and the exposure to the downside, at least for the day, was very, very minimal. And we closed at the higher part of the range, which is super good, which is super constructive and is super bullish. And if you thought Christmas was off, right, at around 8.30 on Friday, right, Christmas is back on because the bulls uh, did their job, engulfed the news, engulfed the candle. And here we are back above the top of the range and we reclaimed back the 150 day moving average. So that's a good thing, right? So going into this week, obviously there's a lot of bullish sentiment, right? We are about what, 20 days from Christmas, right? Three weeks from Christmas. We are uh, about three, three and a half weeks from New Year's Eve to kind of wrap up the year. Again, hopefully everybody's doing great in all aspects of their lives. But most important part is how do we dissect last week's information and use it going into this week? So. Just if you looked at the last three sequences, again, the scoreboard is not going to really tell you uh, how important Friday's close was. But if you look at the final numbers, you have the SPY up 1% for the week. 
Nothing, right? Nothing to write a hold about. The Dow Jones, despite this crazy, crazy move on Friday, was flat, was absolutely flat. The, the Qs uh, and the Nasdaq were up uh, over 2% for the week, which is absolutely good. But the most important part is how we close. This is the highest close above the 150-day moving average in this whole formation. The last time we were above the 150-day moving average was actually on the way down, uh, going to going in August 19th. So it's actually very, very significant that we did close above the 150-day moving average. For the market to start rallying back and start going into this next phase, because again, especially in the PS60 theory, we believe stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. So if we are above supply here, well, the next supply zone is all the way up here around this 299, 300 area. For this, that needs to, in a, in a perfect world, the Qs would kind of go sideways a little bit, right? It doesn't mean the market needs to go sideways, you're in individual stocks, but the whole kind of group just go a little bit sideways for maybe one or two days. But if we start reclaiming back this, uh, at least Friday's highs of 93 and a half, and Thursday's highs of 95.75, then yeah, I do believe uh, any close above 95.75 for the week, right? For the week, uh, I do think we see this 300 level and then possibly stretching out to this 305, uh, 307 level. When you look at the SPYs, you kind of have the same thing, right? SPY, very, very strong uh, this week. They finally took out that 403 level that we talked about, the CPI highs. For, for several days and now they're just building right they're building they held the five day moving average for the SPYs to continue back to the upside uh, any close above 408 would reclaim Friday's whole channel but any close above 410 would get this thing to the upper Bollinger Band at 418. Uh, even the SMHs right that that are uh, well as well as predominantly 100% semiconductors that's the ETF proxy um, you know they're holding up fairly well despite uh, China protests despite shortages despite uh, chain uh, supply chains they're holding up very very well and since the you know since the semiconductors and the biotechs com compose pretty much the the predominant group of the the Nasdaq 100 it's kind of it really is amazing that we are holding up fairly, fairly well with all these different uh, conditions. So if the semiconductors want to go higher, we need to get above this 230, right? Any close on the semiconductors above 230s, we're seeing a move uh, to this 237 level, which becomes uh, really, really important. Some notable names, right? Some notable names uh, that are standing out and um, are standing down, right? And let's start off with technology first. Netflix has definitely been the leader. Usually about a year ago, if you turned around and said, well, Netflix is going to be the leader uh, of this market, and, you know, we would have kind of laughed, right? Because again, uh, this year you saw, uh, you know, the initial slowdown in the subscription model. Uh, first uh, growth uh, has, has pretty much been stunned this year, but they continue, right? They continue to go higher. And I've been saying this for years and years. I still... Every day that I that I wake up, not that I think about this every day, but every day that I wake up and I say, "Well, I can't believe Netflix is still a standalone company." You you would think at this juncture of the game, uh, you know, Netflix would be a perfect fit for Amazon because then you know they got Amazon Prime, you got Apple, Apple TV, and then all these different uh, different streaming services, HBO Max and MGM and uh, Comcast and everything under the sun. So the fact that they're st still a standalone company really. Uh, is a wonder, but they continue to go higher. And notable, uh, notable moves, uh, notable bets. Uh, you know, in the last in the last several days on Netflix, uh, when the stock was at 305, we saw the 320s. When the stock was at 320s, we started seeing the 350s coming in. So there's definitely institutional money flow on this thing. It just continues to grind higher. Uh, it looks like 325, somewhere around that area, could provide a little bit of a pause, right? Just on this upper Bollinger Band, as you can see here. Every time it hits the upper Bollinger Band, it kind of pauses a little bit. But remember, it's not a it's not a brick wall, it's just a soft stop. But I, I would assume that a, a, a needed rest around the 325 level would be very, very beneficial for it. But ultimately, if it continues to go sideways, uh, just along with everything else, it should continue to go higher. Meta, right? For all its meta problems, the metaverse, uh, Zuckerberg, this, that, privacy issues, it's really behaved very, very well. Even in the last couple of days, and again, this is just short sample size, but Meta, Meta has, has acted very, very well. Um, you know, even despite, uh, even despite the inside day, it continued to go higher. Despite yesterday when the Qs were down $7, it pre-market was down like a dollar and a half. Again, continue to move it higher. Again, notable bets going into this week. We see the, th uh, the 130s. We see the 135s. It's looking very, very good. Uh, a name that, again, is close and near and dear to my heart, and I think I can speak for a lot of you guys who trade uh, with us in the, in the webinar, is Tesla. Tesla's having a hard time, right? Uh, Tesla's having a hard time. 
uh, getting out of this channel. Uh, there has been, on the way down, uh, and it's been a great two-way trader, on the way down, it's been showing a lot of institutional money flow to the downside, right? We, we you know, we cover this pretty much on, on a day-to-day -day basis, but, you know, they were coming for, you know, the 160 puts. They were coming for the 145 puts uh, going into the first quarter of 2023, but they can't get the stock down, right? And that's the most important part. They can't get the stock down. And once they start rallying again, and, and, and again, I, will, I, I would like to give Tesla the benefit of the doubt, number one, uh, we are in a strong bias tape right now, right? But anything could happen on, on, on both sides of the market. But more important, I, I want to see Tesla finally get above this bottom, uh, this bottom channel and kind of break this downtrend and really stamp itself above the 20-day moving average. Is this the greatest chart in the world? Absolutely not. But I want to see this thing finally wake up. It would be nice. We, ha we haven't had a run. Uh, we haven't had a run on Tesla since, uh, you know, going back to October 24. Uh, all the way to October 27, this three-day three run. So it would be really, really nice to Tesla get it, get out above this channel here and finally start pushing into this 210, 215 level, the 50-day moving average. The notable bets uh, with some pretty decent size. Uh, they did come for this week's, right? This week's, uh, the 12.9 expiration. Uh, they, did, they did start coming for the 200s, the 210s. I saw some brief 215s they might be stretching that but who knows with tesla uh anything is possible the one concern from the from from the main street point of view is continued spending right continued consumer spending this week uh you saw costco right you saw costco come out with crappy earnings you saw kroger uh come out with crappy earnings earlier in the month you saw target come down with crappy earnings so it does really still show you that consumers you know they're 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 watching their pennies right and a lot of you know a lot of people unfortunately are are being hurt by this economy and you can see it by uh the aftershock of of retail earnings uh but does that mean that it has to spill over into the stock market absolutely not remember main street and wall street are six months apart sometimes a year apart so what is happening in main street america doesn't necessarily uh, need to translate into um, uh, Wall Street, and that's the most important part. So going into this week, uh, I am definitely bull biased, okay, until we have a reason uh, not to be. Let me give you guys some names uh, that look uh, pretty strong, despite what we just talked about, lack of spending. You know, look at AF, Abercrombie and Fish. Again, I don't remember, uh, you know, I don't remember uh, shopping at Abercrombie and Fish since I was like, 15 years old, but hey, you know, to each his own, right? Look, beautiful chart. Nice little, uh, nice little consolidation here. If it starts its next leg up here, it looks really good. You got, you got these solar names. Uh, ENPH uh, continues to crank. Uh, Friday broke out. It stopped at the linear regression line. You know, if this thing starts reclaiming Friday's channel, uh, you have a next leg up. Even these cheap Chinese EV names, right? Look, look at chart on Neo, right? Talking about, you know, Tesla. Look at Neo. Neo had a monster day, really big monster day. Uh, going into the week, you got Peloton. Congratulations for all you guys. I know there was a pivot on Friday off that $12 area. Even Peloton breakout. Notable buyers came in for next week's uh, 13 and a half, 14, and we did see some January 15. So hey, you know if you if you trade the smaller names, you know watch Peloton this week. This thing starts confirming Friday's channel. There's a shot this thing gets to the 14 and a half area. Disney. Uh, looks good as well, right? Look at Disney. Look at how tight this Disney range is. Well, Disney starts taking down this whole channel here. This thing's ready to go. And you know, one name, you know, one name uh, that we're definitely watching. You know, I got have a whole bunch of beta names on. But look at Microsoft, right? Look at Microsoft. Mr. Softy had a great run, right? Had a great run off the PAL numbers inside day. Shook off yesterday's weakness, like a lot of you know, like a lot of stocks. And all it needs to do is reclaim the 150-day moving average. Uh, for the next leg up. So that's it, guys. That's it. Hopefully, everybody is doing great. Hopefully, everybody has great, wonderful relationships that we are continuing building memories. Hope you have God in your heart. You have love in your heart. And the most important thing is being a great human being. Being a great trader, right, is, is something to, to aspire to, but being a great human being is a little bit more important. Guys, God bless. I wish you lots of happiness, lots of love. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.